Hi friends, this is Dr. Ralph Wilson with Joyful Heart Renewal Ministries. October 22nd to 26th, I was privileged to be the main speaker at the East Africa Renewal Pastors and Leaders Conference in Eldoret, Kenya. I've been working with this group of pastors four times before, starting in 2007, 2008, 2011, 2014. The theme of the conference was to gain and renew the love that we had at first based on Revelation 2 that uh, says to the Ephesian church, I have this against you that you've abandoned the love you had at first. And so the goal of the conference was to help pastors and leaders restore that fresh love for Jesus and that relationship with him that is so easily goes by the wayside when we get involved in in pouring out without receiving. So my first message on Tuesday afternoon uh, was based on that verse and calling people to come back to Jesus and to spend the time with him that it takes to to have the kind of relationship that is a loving relationship. It was wonderful that my translator, God spoke to him immediately in that message and, and he realized that he himself needed to do that. And I'm sure all over the conference, God was speaking to people. On Wednesday, I, I spoke about the patterns necessary for spiritual fitness and intimacy with Jesus, particularly a daily time with the Lord, which I believe is absolutely essential for us to grow in our love for Jesus. So I talked about that, elements of that, and then and then quietly for maybe 10 or 15 minutes just sat in a chair and demonstrated it, untranslated, <laughs> just what my time was like. The next day, Bishop Chris did the same thing, followed by a lady who was a real prayer intercessor, and then uh, another pastor in El Duret, uh, on Saturday so people could see what that looked like. Then I, I talked about the importance of uh, if we're going to draw close to the Lord we need to leave behind patterns of sin. I spoke about integrity, uh, honest business dealings. Many of the pastors there uh, are small business people. The government in Kenya and other areas in East Africa are notoriously corrupt starting with the office of the president all the way down through the cabinet and local politics police and that can also touch pastors and leaders and it seemed like as I brought that message on Wednesday afternoon that God came by his spirit and brought tremendous conviction in that place and I think God spoke to a lot of people on Thursday I talked a uh, more theological uh, approach to what greed is, errors of the prosperity gospel, which feeds on that kind of greed, because I don't think the pastors in the conference were uh, subject to the prosperity gospel in particular, but they have to deal with it with the people that uh, are influenced by teachers around them. Thursday uh, afternoon, I spoke on sexual purity, which is one of the temptations that we pastors have. And there was something going on in the conference, and I was bummed out about it and kind of angry about it. And so I don't know that I was all that tuned in on that message. I talked about sexual purity uh, and the need to, to walk before the Lord. I talked about how God loves us in spite of what we might have experienced in, in rape or abuse or whatever that God cares for us. At any rate, uh, the message from my standpoint seemed to be okay but kind of flat but I turned the meeting over I was kind of bummed out I turned the meeting over to Bishop Chris who is a, a gifted evangelist and he, he said I've got this announcement to make I'd like everyone to come in from the outside the, the doors had been open uh, through the, the whole conference so people could walk in and out and he said I've got this announcement everyone come in so then he said uh, I want to invite those who have an who need to invite Jesus Christ to come into their lives and, and uh, save them from sin, you come forward. 
I was utterly amazed when five young people, maybe uh, late teens, early 20s, came forward and received Christ into their life. I don't think they came to the conference to hear me. I think they came that day because a nationally known singer and dancer was... uh, was ministering but god must have been speaking to them through my message and uh and five young people came to christ it was just amazing to me on friday i spent the whole day talking about uh listening for god's voice you see once we establish in a time with god on a daily daily time with god a a personal uh loving relationship with him we can start to hear and listen for his voice, and he will speak to us on occasion. And so I I had three messages developing a pattern for listening and how we see that in the Bible, how to recognize God's voice among all the other voices in our head, and then how to discern God's voice. Uh, On Saturday, I, I spoke on your ministry in the Word of God. So many uh, pastors, particularly that don't have the privilege of theological training, feel like they have to copy the evangelist they see on television or they get a sermon and then preach the sermon. And I was trying to say, your ministry arises out of your relationship with Jesus and, and what, he's, what he's showing you and how he's leading you and what he's showing you to preach on rather than copying somebody else that if we preach on something that we haven't lived, then it's just theory and it falls flat. And then finally, I spoke about Paul's deliberate tent-making strategy. That is, Paul didn't make tents because he had to to earn a living. He could have asked, for instance, the Corinthian church to support him, but he chose not to. In every city he went to, he made tents, earned money for himself and his team, and gave money to the poor as a deliberate strategy to teach people uh, to work hard, to give to the poor, not sponge off others, and uh, so that he would be free to say what he needed to to them. The conference was over on Saturday. I think there were probably uh, most days 400, at least 400 pastors and leaders per day. Some could stay the whole conference. Many came for a day or two. And then on Sunday, I preached at the Word of Life Harvest Church to the second service of the congregation there, and they were celebrating the eighth anniversary uh, of their church on that particular property. It was a great blessing to me to be privileged to be used by God in that kind of conference, and I'm, I'm praying that God would, would continue to let the word that he brought through me uh, filter into the lives of those pastors and leaders so that they are better equipped to minister where they are and that many of them would draw close to Jesus afresh and anew with a revitalized faith. I stayed in this really nice hotel in Nairobi that I've stayed in before and had a wonderful dinner and I had this breakfast spread in their breakfast room that was just wonderful. But I've seen really good breakfast spreads and this was wasn't as as big as some I've seen but it was every bit as good and well prepared and it was great and I was kind of thinking about how this how great this is and God spoke to my heart and he said heaven is better <laughs> oh God uh, let us draw close to you uh, I pray oh Lord that you might touch those that were able to come to this conference and many who wanted to and weren't able to Let the sermon notes that I'll be distributing bless many, O God, as they're seeking to draw close to you as well. And I pray, O Spirit of God, bring revival and renewal throughout East Africa and throughout the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege of being used by God. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to thank those of you who prayed for the conference and gave toward the conference for giving of yourself to see this happen. Together as a team, God used us, and I'm thankful. God bless you and be with you. In Jesus' name, amen.